Yeah, it kind of feels like we just popped up shop in the middle of a Walmart. And we're just kind of going after it. <laughs> Making know? it work. Love it. All right. Hey, what's up, Buffalo Fanatic? Z-Bot, Rico, and you already know who this guy's, uh, guy is. Double Ocho, Dawson Knox, joining us here at Western Media Day. We were just talking. I have to ask you this right off the bat. We were just talking to Alan's barber, Jesse. You got the best head of hair on the team. I, mean, I don't, I don't want to just, I don't want to get you in trouble, but that's, that's my personal opinion. That means a lot. The effort that goes into it, I got to know. You wake up, do you just roll out with it, or is that how you got to To be completely it? honest, it's, uh, yeah, roll out of bed, throw, throw on a hat. Um, if I'm not wearing a hat, just shower, let it air dry, you know? Just go with all natural look. So it looks that good with so, my left. I'm, I'm too lazy with hair products and stuff. I just kind of let it go. Right. So yeah. is there enough length for a man bun? Would you ever do it? Oh, that's a great question. Um, never tried it. Never tried it. A curly-headed man, but I don't know if I've seen that. You could be really... <laughs> That'd be the first. Stuff. Yeah. 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 That yeah, might sure. be the next Dawson... Listen... Where the man bun on Dawson? Watch out now. <laughs> he's <on to> something. <laughs> now he goes, he's going to look for royalties. Watch out now. <laughs> <laughs> he just Absolutely. coined this right here. Yeah. I got to take a trip down memory lane be, just because it's still to this day, it's one of the best things I've seen. I'm in the stadium for Bills Patriots Wild Card Weekend a couple years back. I think you know where I'm going for this. It, it, we haven't gotten into the meat of that game yet where it wound up being one of the best things. I mean, at least for me as a fan that I've seen. We kicked that game off with... One of the most improbable and exciting touchdowns I've ever seen, and you're on the receiving end of it. I don't know if you've been asked this before, but I have to ask you personally. When, when, when he's throwing that ball, are you under the impression that ball is being targeted to you, or are you under the impression Josh is throwing that ball out of the back of the end zone? So right when he threw it, I could tell he was throwing the ball away because, you know, he just kind of lofted it. I'm like, okay, that's probably going to go out of the back. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, wait, I can, I can think I can get this thing. So I just went up, tried to get it, and uh, thankfully it worked out. Got yeah. both feet down, and Josh, you know, his momentum carried him to the sideline, so he didn't even see what happened. Right. He was confused till we got on the sideline. I was like, "Did you catch it? Like, what happened?" Um, I was like, "Yeah, bro, thanks for just throwing it up to me. Appreciate you." He's like, "Dude, I was trying to throw it away." Oh, so he flat out came out. And yeah, told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was so confused. He didn't know what happened. Well, you know what? You could tell the flick of it. It was just like it didn't. It was. It was the, almost too effortless. The chemistry, know, just yeah. The chemistry is there, and when you guys are doing this, oh. I mean, that's all that needs to be said. You don't need to <laughs> even talk. Touch. That's it, man. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, let, let me flip over a little bit. Um, listen, if you guys are not standing next to this man, this man is a big boy. So, blocking. When it comes to blocking in the NFL, and I, and I got to get there. And you've done such a tremendous job on refining your game. And, and, and pass blocking and run blocking, all that good stuff. Now, hear me out when I say this. Uh, what is it like now that people look at you now, okay, he's, he's a blocker, and how do you set yourself up for the next three plays, right? There might, there might be a, a script, and you're, you're blocking, you're blocking, and you're running for a route. What's your, what's your setup? How are you setting these guys up to set yourself up for that release? Yeah, so that's kind of the fun thing about being a tight end. You get to do a little bit, little bit of everything. You could be blocking a six technique. 290 pound DN and the next player catching a touchdown. So that's kind of where the game plan comes in into play. Like Coach Dorsey's awesome at kind of making things all look the same. And then before we know it, we're running the play action pass. Don't want to be down the field. Um, but it's kind of just week to week, kind of whatever the defense is doing, figuring out their tendencies, giving them one look for a few times. And then before they know it, you know, we're in behind them throwing touchdowns and stuff. Right. But um, it's all the mastermind of Coach Dorsey. To piggyback off the blocking, because when I think tight end, I think this is a lot of people, you're thinking about the electric plays you guys make, just like I was talking about with the, with the playoff game there. But the thing I think people forget is you're also alignment on most downs. You're not making those plays every snap. When you approach the line and you're getting ready for a play and you kind of look at the totality of the game afterwards and then look at the highlight reel and then the blocking, do you feel as though as a tight end that that, is one of the more underrated aspects of football based on just the general knowledge amongst you know the, the average fan or the public? Yeah, I think it's harder than people realize. <laughs> um, you know, at tight end U every year, we always kind of talk about how, you know, we're running away from guys that are supposed to be faster than us, you know, running routes against 205-pound safeties and corners. Um, but then, you know, you bring us in line and we got to do what a left tackle does. We got to pass protect against the best pass rushers we got a block in the run game against some of these guys that are paid to fill their gap and stop the run so that's kind of what makes it so fun is you know that versatility of the position right. but um odds are in every play we're at a mismatch blocking guys bigger running away from guys faster so uh, we always pride ourselves on being you know the best athletes on the field sure i'm gonna i'm gonna jump in uh, a little bit away from football if you don't mind um 
you you had a, a very close relationship with your brother and i'm curious because of your, your christian i believe your christian faith how was it how were you able to refocus um and and try to get back onto the field and become the the old dawson when you still have somewhat of a heavy heart uh what was it that that was able to to push you forward to try to get back to the old dawson yeah um honestly probably one of the hardest things i've ever done but um that's all god man i mean that strength that he gives people to get over tragedies um and something that mm. just us as humans we can't do by ourselves so i can't imagine um if you're if you don't have those same beliefs if you don't know there's a higher power with a bigger plan better plan um i don't know how you move past it but i mean my family has been incredible um teammates coaches everybody in that building was extremely supportive they didn't rush me back to anything um you know they just told me take the time i need take whatever i need wh you know whether it's a day off or just extra time with the family they were very very supportive and understanding um so it's kind of just a little mix of everything but just knowing that we didn't really lose him because we know exactly where he is absolutely you know he's up in heaven watching us and just knowing that he, he's going to have a front row seat for every game from now on, even mm -hmm. though he wasn't able to make a bunch of games in person because he was playing football at the time. But I think just knowing that he's up, he's up there, I'm going to see him again one day. Um, it's kind of a combination of all those things and just staying strong, knowing that God's got our back. He's got our best interests. Even through these terrible things that happen, um, he's got a plan. It's all going to work out for good. Listen, I love that response. Absolutely. and. And the beautiful thing about this this whole situation is, I'll f unfortunately losing a brother, but you had you had fifty three other brothers on the team holding you down, so that must have given you a, a lot of strength. So, man, I commend you, man, because it's it's incredibly tough, but having that faith, it's it's everything. So I appreciate that you uh, sharing that with us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my teammates were unbelievable coaches too. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm glad you said that because that's where I wanted to go. You're in a unique position, unlike anybody else, when you go through a situation like that where you have that team. And if you've never been part of a team before, you wouldn't realize it. But if you are, you know exactly what comes with that. And it's it's like a second family. What's it like being in, in a situation where you have that many guys that are just with you in a spot that you couldn't imagine being in? Oh, it's like extended family. Yeah. I mean, we always kind of pride our ourselves and our team on being family style. You know, everyone's got each other's best interests. We got each other's backs through games, on the sideline, off the field. Um, just feeling that support from everyone is unbelievable. It's something that's kind of hard to describe if you don't really know that feeling. But also the the fan base, man. I mean, yeah. Bills Mafia is the most incredible fan base I've ever seen. Um, and the fact that I get to be a part of it is unbelievable. I think they raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the Punt Foundation through donating $16.88 to Punt. Awesome. Um, 16 for my brother's number, 88 for me. But um, just kind of feeling a whole, you know, countrywide fan base having my back too. It was, you know, something that kind of gives me chills thinking about, um, uh, it's, it's storybook stuff and I couldn't be more thankful. I, I didn't even think about that. It just took me away for a second. I didn't even think about the fact that you have a, m a million people you didn't even know. Oh. Right. Coming, coming. That's, it's just a crowd of that. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in here. By the way, folks, Dawson Knox Mr. Dawson Knox himself with Buffalo Fanatics right now at the Western Media event. Um, I care, can, I, can I jump into the elephant in the room? We've got the AFC East is absolutely bananas, right? And it's like everybody and their mama wants to come to the <laughs> AFC East, and it's starting to annoy the heck out of us. <laughs> Not, unless they're coming to Buffalo. Unless they're coming to Buffalo. Right, but right. the AFC in a whole is, such a, is, is a beast. We added another piece to this team, and... What is it that the AFC is going to get from you and our rookie, Dalton Kincaid? Man, I'm so excited. Dalton's such an incredible kid, um, such a down-to-earth guy, very relatable. Um, the type of guy I would want to hang out with off the field, too. And we've already done some of that, but um, he's got a great head on his shoulders, super smart, well-polished for coming out of college. I mean, he's running crisp routes, seeing the defense well, great hands, um, so just kind of building that chemistry with Josh and then maybe using multiple tight end sets here and there, kind of moving us around, getting mismatches on linebackers. Um, you know, I touched on earlier how we got to be matched up with DBs most of the time, but once, once you get someone your size trying to cover you, 
you know, that's, that's what a tight end drools, you know, we're drooling all over the place for yeah. that. Um, so I think coach Dorsey's going to do an incredible job. He already has this summer. Um, but it, it's going to be really fun kind of moving some of those pieces around, especially using Dalton. Cause he's awesome. That's how, amazing. How do you think, and I, you came right out, D- Dalton's drafted you immediately tweet out that gift. And I love seeing that because Rico and I were watching the draft together. And we immediately had thought, I think this elevates another level of Dawson's game that's not available right now because there's not that ability to do what you were just talking about, swapping out and whatnot. You kind of confirm that to us. You put that you put that out there where you're like, you know, it's get, it's getting fun now. When you're talking about the things that obviously you can't give anything away, and, and we're excited to see it. But when you're talking about these things that Darcy's cooking up a, a bit, is it something that you think from your personal game, one, you haven't really been a part of, of before, and two – that's going to be a real positive effect on this offense. Yeah. Um, I mean, you look at a lot of the really successful tight ends over the years. They've always had a lot of 12 personnel sets, too. I mean, Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz. Yep. Um, even Gronkowski and Gonzalez. Back yeah. the, or not Gonzalez. Um, Hernandez. Yeah. Hernandez, yeah. yeah. I mean, those guys have always worked really well together. Um, and that's something that I'm more excited for than anything, um, just getting a you know, getting a lot of 12 personnel out there, bringing us in for the run game, spreading us out for the passing game. Um, I think it opens a whole other door that um, it's going to be really exciting. I'm, I'm super excited to see what we do with it. So I, I got to get into this because, like, the, the biggest comedian on the team arguably is not on the team anymore, and that's that's a little dirty. A little Isaiah dirty. McKenzie. Yeah, so, exactly and, and we love Isaiah McKenzie. He's going to do his thing in Indianapolis. But who is filling his shoes as as the as the guy that kind of comedically keeps the team glued in <laughs> together, you know, uh, Josh does plenty of that by himself. No kidding. Okay, um, Gabe Davis for sure. Really? Yeah. I mean, Dion's here. His energy is always hard to beat. Um, but he shows it with, with like with Gabe. That's why I said really because it just seems like maybe it's probably something only you guys are seeing, right? Right. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. I mean, Gabe's hilarious. Right. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot of guys on the team that are funny. Uh, but, like, Tyrell Dotson, I think he's hilarious. No kidding. Okay. But there, there's tons of guys on the team with great senses of humor, keeping things light when they need to be light, you know, not taking anything too seriously when we don't need to. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Lil Dirty was kind of like the glue. The glue. The, the comedic glue. glue. The, the comedic relief. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but there's already been some guys stepping up into that. All right, good. We're glad to hear, we're glad to hear the shoes are being filled. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. You touched on this a little while ago. You mentioned tight end university. What is it about the tight end position? It's it's like it's like a fraternity. It seems like all of you guys like I just envisioned it seems like all of you guys have one gigantic group chat and it feels like you guys just hang out on the weekends. That's what it's that's what it seems like. Yeah. Um it really is like a brotherhood. Yeah. I mean, because I think tight ends for the most part have very similar personalities. Um, very unselfish guys. You know, we're we're not gonna get all the glitz and the glamour of the receivers. Um you know, we we can see how the O line gets overlooked a lot just because, you know, they're blocking the whole game, and so no one really looks at that part um, as kind of being a spotlight position. But I think just having that common common ground of just doing whatever the team needs you to do for that play for that game um, kind of makes everyone have a similar similar vibe to to themselves. Absolutely. But uh, tied on you and Nashville is always so much fun. It's like. It's like we've known each other for years. Yeah, it didn't. It see. It just. It seems like you yeah. look at it. And it just. It seems like you guys are all just best buds. It's so fun. It yeah, I'm, I'm super excited this year. I think it's the week right after mini camp um, in Nashville. Can't go wrong. Down the road from me, so uh, I mean, we'll be golfing together after. You know, we'll do field work and some film in the morning, but then in the afternoon or in the evenings, you know, we're getting dinner together, um, going to see some live music at one of the bars. Um, Nashville's known for some good uh, Broadway <laughs> activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to – I mean, every year I look forward to it every year. So I'm, I'm really excited again for this year. So – and, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious on this, on this situation here. So Bill's Mafia wants to know this. They're watching OTAs. We're, we're getting information from reporters, and there's only so much they can, can report. Is there anybody that has, has flashed that you're like, oh, okay, I see you? Is anybody on the offense side, since you're on the offensive side, and if you want to jump on defense, by all means, but who is standing out that's kind of showing you a little something like, okay, I see you, young bud. What do you got? Yeah, shoot. Um, there's a lot of guys. Um, I mean, even even Dalton. I mean, 
great hands, great routes, um, making plays already. Nice. Um, Hardy, his speed, his speed is unbelievable. It's so funny. I walk through this little kind of be, you know, shuffling around, jogging real slow. But then when he turns the jets on, it's unreal. It's crazy. Um, Damian Harris, too. Mm. We're excited to see him on the field. Mm. I mean, that guy can roll. It's going to be hard to tackle him, too. So, I mean, Bean has just done an incredible job getting some more weapons. Um, I mean, we've seen flashes of talent in every position group that we – you know, new guys that weren't here last year that are picking it up pretty quick. It's been it's been fun to watch. I, I got to double up because you brought the running back position and I have a, just a love for the running back position. And I feel like it's an art that people are just disrespecting. Mm -hmm. And we lost Devin Singletary and I love Devin Singletary. And uh, we had him at the at the event last year. And King Corso. Just, he's a Kane Corso. We asked him what kind of dog he'd be, and he chose a Kane Corso. I didn't see it coming, but that's what he chose. He thought about it for a minute. He, he did. He yeah. did this right. He did think about yeah. it. So um, I bring this up because you've got we've got Harris in the building. We've got uh, <laughs> we've got our young buck James Cook in the building. Um, what who it was we bring in? Um, Murray was it uh, that we brought in? Latavius. Latavius mm -hmm. Murray. So there's there's a quite a bit. Of, of juice in the backfield. But you, you mentioned Harris. What is about his game that you feel is going to elevate this offense? He's got some power. It's going to be hard to tackle him. Um, and his top end speed, from what I've seen so far in OTAs, he's as fast as anybody. So it's – I know he, he gave us a run for our money a couple times um, with the Patriots, but i um, definitely glad he's on our team now. He, I mean, James Cook in the backfield too, he's – you know, he, he's taking steps every day. Um, Naheem Hines, I mean, yeah. his speed, you can't really match that. So him coming out of the backfield too, I'm really, really excited to see what it's going to look like. You're giving me really, really excited. <laughs> I have for sure yeah, really yeah. excited. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be fun to watch sometimes. <laughs> you're, you're telling me. Yeah. You're telling me. One more guy that I got to touch on because he's going to be in your vicinity. And you, you said the word power. This is where I, I thought of it. What can you tell us that we don't, we might not know right now about Osiris Torrance coming into this offense? Oof. I think he, when we do all the testing stuff, I think he had the strongest hamstrings on the team. Um, like hamstrings, by, like by far. Um, and so, I mean, he's a workhorse, man. He, he works hard every day, keeps his head down, um, does the right things. Seems like he's very coachable. Um, man, he's strong. It's going to be hard to get past that guy. I'm glad I don't have to line up against him. Love it. Yeah, he's he's powerful, man. One look at that guy. And I, I, when I saw him put on, he, was, he had the suit on, taking the pictures at the facility. Yeah. And you're just like, you, like you just said, like you're glad he's on, on our side, yeah. not the other side. I'm glad I don't have to pass rush against yeah, him. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talking about guys who aren't your side. Oh, my right? gosh. Yeah, don't yeah. touch me. You know, he, well, yeah. I, I know you've got uh, some, some things you want to do, but I, I do have a few more things to touch on, and then uh, we'll let you get because it's going to be a busy evening for you. Week six, you may not know who you play week six, no. right? Because it's one game at a time. We get it. We're, you're coached up. We know, <laughs> right? But week six, it's the Giants. And uh, we have old buddy on the Giants squad. And how fun, and, uh, how fun is it going to be going up against B. Dabes, right? Brian Dabes. Oh, my gosh. Everyone on our team loves Dabes. You know, a lot of us were pretty close to him, texting him congrats after, you know, big wins. I think you won Coach of the Year last yep. year. Um, incredible. I mean, guys will go to battle, go to war for him. But, you know, when he comes to Buffalo, is it at, is it in Buffalo? I love that. It's, yeah, uh, it's in Buffalo. It's in Buffalo. It's yeah, he's coming. Game. He's coming over. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's going to. It's right after you guys get back from London, too. Okay. And you're right nice. back from London. Sunday night? It's a prime time, yeah. It's a prime well, time game. So many. I mean, I can't even. I, <laughs> oh, prime time games the baby. best. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love prime time games. But you do, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Nothing like prime time games. Is that a touchy subject in the locker room amongst amongst? Some different guys don't guys? like them because you got to wait around all day, uh -huh. just chill. Some guys just like waking up early, going to get it. You know, being done by five o'clock, kind of time to reset for the rest right. of the day. But a lot of guys love when the lights come on. Yeah. And when you know. Everybody in the country is watching you. I think that just elevates time to play a little right. bit. Um, I wish every time or every game for us was prime time. Wow. Um, well, basically, it is this year. Yeah, I know, I know, this year is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but something special just knowing that all eyes are on you, time to do what you do best in front of everybody, stage couldn't be bigger. I mean, it, it gets me going. Do you do you have a ritual before games and whether it's a 1 p.m. game 
or a primetime game or is your ritual the same? You know, it's it's basically the same. Um, like when it's time to get going, head of the buses, get your pregame meal, it's it's all basically the same for me. But when it's a night game, you know, you got seven or eight hours just to hang around, do nothing. So I almost try to keep my mind off of football. Mm. You know, I'm chilling, watching a movie in the hotel room, taking a walk around whatever city we might be in, just getting fresh air, kind of keeping your mind off the game for that, you know, for that given period of time. But when it's time to, you know, get the pregame meal, that's when everything kind of starts getting more focused, more serious. I get my cup of coffee, get on the bus, um, Love get it. to the locker room, do a little walk around the field, go out for pregame, you know, get some extra routes in with Josh. Uh, it's just, it, you can't beat game day. Oh. I mean, you just live for it. You touched on you lo- the, the aspects of the prime time that you love, and that's all eyes are on you. You're going to have all European eyes on you out in London. What does that feel like knowing you're going to be going across the pond and playing? Yeah, I couldn't be more excited. I've never been to Europe. Um, So just having a little extra fan base over there, I'm sure Bill's Mafia will still travel like crazy. I mean, it's unbelievable. (laughs) Um, But just being in London, new territory, across the pond, a bunch of European fans starting to kind of enjoy football a little bit. I think that energy is going to be completely different, too, in a good way. Right. Um, couldn't be more excited for that one. I love it. I well, listen, I got this last one for me, and I don't know how touchy it's going to be, but I got to ask, Bill's Mafia is still kind of steaming a little bit on the last game that we played. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not about going back to last game, but it's more how motivated is this team based on how we ended the season going into this season how motivated are you guys? Are you, do you guys talk about it every day? Like, how hungry are you guys for this? Yeah, there's a certain point where you just got to turn the page and move on. Um, but I think everyone still has that bad taste in their mouth. Yeah. Um, that little extra chip on your shoulder that um, it wasn't just, you know, it was a close game. It was that we we just got beat. Um, kind of just ran out, of the, ran out of steam towards the end of the season. But um, I think there's a healthy part of being able to turn the page and focus on this year, completely different team new schedule, um, getting past it. But, you know, I think we'd be lying if we didn't say there was a bad taste and mm-hmm. we're ready to smack that out of our mouths. Let's go. go. Let's it. go. Well, I know you got a bunch of commercials to shoot. And by the way, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but the director said, he told me this personally, can't wait to shoot with you today. That's what he said. <laughs> Fact. He said he can't wait to get your personality out there. I'm getting the, getting the acting career going. <laughs> I'm telling go. you what, yeah. I have to say this before we close up or else she'll kill me. My mom wanted me to tell you. She loves you to death, and you are her favorite player. Oh, let's go. So just had to let you know that before we close up shop. <laughs> Thank you. Tell her I love her, too. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I love, I love, man. And I love that uh, you took time to hang out with us. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Appreciate well, you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Mr. Dawson Knox, a big year upcoming. I mean, listen, he's ready. He's jacked. He's ready to go. Locks of hair. Look, this guy. Man bun. Let's try to get him in a man bun yes. this season. Let's go. Maybe on Thank- the commercial right now. Maybe. Under <laughs> the director. He's already wearing a yeah. Yes, sir. You guys have a great one. Thank you, Dawson Knox. Yes. Appreciate oh, you guys. Appreciate Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time. Yeah. Thank you, guys.